Hi, welcome to Leaving the Lies and Telling Your Truth. Thank you for joining us on our channel. I would like to remind you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, go on over to Facebook and join our group that is also called Leaving the Lies and Telling Your Truth. Thank you, Mel, my beautiful, as always, co-host, for joining me today. Love those Christmas decorations. <laughs> Hi. Good. How, I'm, how are you doing today? I'm, it, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Um, today, I'm super excited. It's the first time ever we are doing a double interview with a wonderful married couple that has been married for 26 years, I do believe. Um, I have known Jess since she was 12, and Jacob, I think he was probably, what, 1920? Jess and Jacob, we would like to welcome you today, and thank you for sharing your story and having us be a part of um, your journey. How are you guys doing today? We're doing good, thank We're you. We're great. <laughs> good. No problems. Of course, we are super excited for this one. Yes, it's 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 probably going to be at least a two part, maybe a three part episode. So we'll have to wait and see. But um, we'll because it's we've got you know t double the questions. So we do. <laughs> so and we're going to start out with you, Jessica. Jessica, can you tell us what year you joined the House of Yahweh? How old you were? And kind of give us a short overview of your time in the House of Yahweh up until the point that you were in a relationship with Yaakov. Okay, so it was about 87 that we learned about the house of Yahweh and that was through a pastor uh, when we were going to a church in Hawaii. And um, he ended up coming to a feast in Passover, became an elder, came back home. He was just up here for the feast came back home, convinced a bunch of us to get baptized into the house of Yahweh, which we thought, you know, it sounded like a good thing. Right. So uh, my oldest brother, myself, my mom and my dad, we all got baptized in 88. So from 88 to 89, the spring of 89, we decided because it's too expensive to be traveling back and forth for three feasts from Hawaii to Texas, then we were just going to sell all our stuff. So we started everything, clothes, majority of our clothes, um, dishes, furniture. In fact, we sold the house to my, my auntie. She lives in the house that we were living in. And we ended up moving here 89 in the springtime, which was a night and day difference from being in Hawaii, tropical and everything. And it's springtime, mind you. And it's like 60 something degrees, you know, and complete different uh, climate from Hawaii because we were freezing. We had like two pairs of socks on, two pairs of pants, two shirts, a sweater, a jacket. It was too cold for us Hawaiians up here. Oh my <laughs> word. I honestly don't know how we survived. <laughs> um, <laughs> we were told that we would have a place to live. Um, and our place to live ended up being on the 10 acres there on TMP Lane in a tent. So there's seven of us wow. as a family and we were living in a tent. And um, that, that was all good because feast was just right around the corner. So. You know, we were only in the tent for maybe two weeks plus the Feast of Passover because that was our first uh, feast. Right. Uh, that was all fine. Well, there were storms that would happen that would scare the bejesus out of us because I love thunderstorms growing up, but your thunderstorms in Texas is really scary. The wind, the thunder, the lightning, the everything. Oh my gosh. Um, and then we ended up getting moved into a one bedroom house for all seven of us with all the belongings that we had. Wait, so Jess, can I ask how long did you live in the tent then total? Like how many weeks did you guys live in a tent before you had an actual home? Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, probably about six months. So basically, months. we would go, 
yeah, we would go in and out of living in a tent to a home. Thankfully, we were always in a home during the winter time. Wow. But it seemed like during the summertime, if we couldn't afford it or whatever, because mind you, we came up here, had nothing. Okay. Right. No job prepared for us, secured for us, no place to live. It was basically we left what we knew and moved up here to start all over again. And you know and what's this crazy? Was our mom and dad. I, that's the that was my first feast. And I remember I met all you guys. I remember you guys, but I had no idea that you were living in a tent at that time. I didn't know that part of your story, even though it was there. I guess I just assumed I probably had seen you guys in a tent. I probably just assumed you were in the tent because it was the feast. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. Wow. But you know, it's just, it's a part of our story. Um, we like to laugh about it when we sit around and we talk about it, but, right. and you know, we are like, how did we survive so long? But, you know, thankfully, like I said, thankfully we were always in a house with heat during the winter time because right. I would not be able to survive that. No. Um, and then during the feast times, you know, I loved being as young as I was when I came to the house because the feasts were very enjoyable. You know, got to meet a lot of yeah. new people and made friends and stuff like that. But yeah. And then um, I think so there were, there's been so many times that we've moved from the tent to a house. But finally, we settled down in a um, HUD home mm. on uh, North 6th here in Abilene. And from that point, we didn't have to go back to a tent. So very thankful for that. <laughs> wow. So you said that several families came with you. Were the other yes. families asked to live in tents also? We all started in tents. But um, they were more either they were younger had savings or was able to easily locate a job to where they didn't have to continue to live in a tent. Mm, gotcha. Mind you, when we, when we came from Hawaii, we were on welfare. <coughs> My dad is considered disabled. So he was con uh, collecting social security and you know, the cost of living in Hawaii is a lot, but the assistance that we got in Hawaii, actually allowed us and then uh we also had a house on um a hawaiian homestead so mm -hmm. it's kind of like the reservations up here right. you know we get we get okay. first pick and stuff and um then we were also on hud because dad's disabled mom wasn't employed and stuff like that so you know we were living fairly good in hawaii right and then we come here and it's like whoa night and day difference what what, is, so, what choice did we just make here? You well, know? and I'm just right. going to verify when you told that when you were told that you had a place to live, you you were not told before you moved there it was a tent. Is that correct? No, no, okay, absolutely just, not. Yeah. When when we were told, when my parents were told, when the group of adults were told that we would have some place to stay, we assumed, you know, not anything lav uh, right, luxurious or anything, but just something that we can be sheltered from the elements. Right. And stuff right. like that. Four solid walls. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> With an indoor shower, not the one that you walk to. <laughs> right. And, and from someone who had access to homes that was in the realty business, then there were homes available. Rentals and stuff but, like that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, Jessica, so did, did your parents find jobs out in the quote unquote world or did they work for the house of yahweh my dad he was always a person even in in hawaii he always volunteered uh, so you know because he was in a really bad accident so it he was there he was very smart very intelligent but um there were some limitations to him you know right. But um, my mom, it wasn't until probably about a year or two, probably about two years after we moved here that she finally, because my dad was the type of person that he preferred that my mom stay home 
mm. with the children and let him try to make money. Okay. So um, he really tried insisting that my mom stay home, which she did. She gave into it. But finally, it just got to the point where she was like, love, we've got to do something more than this. And she ended up getting herself a job to help offset what we couldn't afford. So, gotcha. And that gotcha. job was outside of the House of Yahweh, correct? It was. Okay. Yeah, it was. Okay. And then how old were you when you met Yaakov? Oh, I think I was 15. Like 15. when, no, well, I knew him when he first came, I heard about him. Right. <laughs> My mom called him a punk. <laughs> and, but no, it was all good. A lot of people did. It, it was all good. Well, and, hold, on, uh, hold on, hold on. Let me explain something real quick to those that are watching. There was, I want to say three of you guys, uh, um, Jeff, um, Orland's brother. Jeff now. Yes, Jeff, okay. Chris, and Kobe. They were the the ooh guys to the generation below Melody and I. So they were they were the it guys. They were the popular ones. So it's not that they were punks or jerks or whatever. <laughs> it's just that they made all the girls' hearts go ooh. So let just so I can explain that to everybody who these three guys was. I mean, would you agree? Well, it's funny. Jess, would you agree? Well, see, that's funny because I was thinking about it because I I guess I'm different in a way when it came to stuff like that because I knew that these those three young men had attention from other girls. Did they catch my eye? Yes. I thought that they were good looking, eye candy, whatnot. But was I going to take the time to let them know? that I find them attractive? No, because they have other girls doing that. So I just. Good well, job, good job. Me. Wasn't in your personality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but I think I was about uh, 15 when we started like really getting to know each other. Okay. And Co, it's your turn now in the hot seat. Can you tell us what year you joined, how old you were, and a shortened version of the beginning of your experience in the house of Yahweh to the point to when you became interested in your beautiful wife. I was 19 when I came to the house. I believe I joined in Tabernacles of 91. Um, my mother and family were already here. My mother and my siblings. Uh, when I first started off, I was just 19 i think we we're living in houston in houston at the time uh so we we're traveling back and forth from there uh, after working down there in houston i decided to move up here to abilene and i decided that i was going to try and be a part of the work so i moved down here and i believe that was in 92 and i first lived with uh Jack Blaine on his property and uh, I was not there long moved over there with you and you Didia and stayed there for a while I started the work soon after I moved here and worked there for I think a little over 14 years but while being in the work uh, there was also a time where uh, her mother, I guess she stopped working out in the world and started working in the press room. And when she would work in the press room, Jessica would work, come and help work in the press room with her. And so we got to be around each other and kind of talk to each other then, even though we really didn't talk that much. But we started talking, I think, at a feast. Yeah. It was a feast. The yeah. feast before you moved down. And um, we even wrote letters back and forth. Not that many, but... Um, It took a while for us to really start talking and getting to know each other. And after we started talking, uh, you know, not long after that, started getting more serious and ended up to the point where, you know, we got married in 94, uh, September 10th of 1994 and have been together since. And Autumn, just so that you know, 
when um, he was living with you guys, that's when I started, like, before that, the feast before that, that's when I really started liking him. Yeah, because y'all used to have uh, youth group activities over there. When I lived there, mm -hmm. I think y'all were when I was living there, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. yes. And of yes. course, all the young people would come over and stuff, and we'd watch a movie or something like that. But, yeah, I kind of started mm -hmm. noticing her then as well, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this. She never wanted to sit next to me, but well, she she may I have, did. but I she, did, she but didn't, I didn't want yeah. him to know how bad I wanted to sit next to him. <laughs> Love um, it. This next question is is now? a little personal, but I'm gonna oh, go ahead. What did you say? What were you gonna say, Adam? No, go ahead. Oh. Go ahead, Mel. Okay, I'm um, sorry. I think I'm lagging. Go ahead. Okay. Um. Is, is a little bit personal, and there's a reason that we're going to ask this question, so I'm just going to explain that ahead of time. Um, we know that you guys had relations, as the House of Yahweh would call it, before you were married. Um, and we just want to ask, and, and did that, you both intended at that point in time in getting married, is that correct? Was that your I, intention? Yeah, I was, it was before that that I told her about my feelings. Um, were you intending to marry me when you told me that? Was that like in my mind that that's clearly what we we're going to do? Probably no. I would okay. say no. Okay, because I kind of thought that I knew it was, that I, I cared did. deeply for her and that yeah. I was falling in love with her and that not, I had no doubt of. But as far as thinking that far down the line, marriage, no. Okay. See, and I think that's where it differs for me. Like, well, first of all, being in the house of Yahweh, they teach you if you're going to be with someone that's right. it that's your forever you know whatever and you're screwed if you don't marry the person you know because then your hands hands off nobody else gets to have you right well so right when when we first started getting together did i like was i thinking marriage i was hoping marriage but right. was i like he's gonna be my husband i didn't know right i, I really didn't know so okay can I, I kind of like to hear it from both of your perspectives, but whoever takes the lead takes the lead. Um, because this is a really great question right here. Um, can you walk us through how it was handled by the house of Yahweh once it came to light? Can you tell us how the house of Yahweh, the elders, the counselors, handled y'all and your situation and having relations before you were married? I was pummeled. Um, they they came down on me pretty hard when because basically I had shared with someone what had taken place, and that person in confidence yeah went mm -hmm. behind me and talked to the elders, which you know I was still friends with them after that. But uh, once they found out, of course, I got called in for a counseling session. That's when. Uh, I guess it really started getting rough. It was rough before that when we were trying to get uh, married, but uh, they were pretty hard on me. They were, and like I said, it was multiple Kohans in there at the time. It was, I can't remember if there was just one, there may be a couple of times where it was just one Kohan, but uh, multiple, usually four of them. And, and how they, often they was this taking place, um, Jacob? Uh, I'd say at least every other Sabbath and sometimes, you know, some Sabbaths in a row. My mom, she states that it used to be, it seemed like it was all the time. It did seem like it was all the time. Uh, I, I thought, you know, thinking of, thinking back on it, that it was every Sabbath, every Sabbath he was in there. So that's almost every Sabbath. That, that's what I'll say. It's probably almost every Sabbath, but, uh, no, um, I, hit a, I hit a nerve. I could tell that. I could tell you that I hit a nerve with something, and they did not take it too well. So that's how it affected me. Well, to answer my part to that question, though, yeah, I thought that everybody who may have fallen short and having relations outside of marriage was treated this way. That's how I understood it. So, to me, you know, I've never done it before. So to me, I was like, this must be the norm. Okay. Okay. So, because that was actually going to, that's part of my next question is that 
Okay, in hindsight, then, do you think that your situation was dealt with more harshly because they were getting ready to bring out the multiple marriage teaching? Do you think that played would, a part in it? I would say yes, only because come to find out, you know, I don't know for sure, for sure, but I, I don't recall seeing anybody else, whether they, I don't know. But I think that our situation was handled a little differently, harshly, looking back at it. Yeah, it was it was a little over the top, I well, feel. I, I, would, I would tend to agree because I know of at least one other couple that it was pretty obvious because of a pregnancy that they had done that before they were married too. And I don't think they were dealt right. with nearly as harshly as you two, what you, what you two experienced and, and have described basically about all the counseling and the berating and, and uh, harshness that well, you guys Well, not only seen. counseling, yeah. And not only counseling, you know, they basically wanted to try to keep us apart from each other. We couldn't yes. be around each other unless either my parents were there or somebody that they trusted to make sure that we stayed in line. And I was thinking about it today. I actually have a sister that told me when she was younger, she was like, uh, well, she told me here recently, she's like, sister, you know that a lot of the times the reason I was around you, not because I knew that you were leaving and she goes, I'm happy that I got to spend as much time as I did with you. Right. But my counselor, one of the main counselors that I had, assigned her to keep an eye on us. Yes. Wow. And, and you after didn't know we that had then? Gotten together, do what? I'm sorry. You didn't know that at the time? This has just come to light to you recently? Yeah, about maybe two or three years ago. Wow. Yeah. Well, also, even after they had found out that we had gotten together, they still tried convincing her to talk to this other man who was interested in her. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And I had already been with her. Right. And they were trying to convince her because what they told her was, he's in the work, he doesn't make money, he won't be able to provide you food storage, you know, for tribulation or whatever. And had let her know that, or he had been interested in her before and they were trying to convince her that he was a better match because he was working out in the world. He traveled to the feast from out of state. And this is after we had already been together. Okay, I, I'm, this, I, this is just kind of a quick question and I, it may be relevant, it may not, but by any chance was this person already married to somebody else? No. No. Okay. No, he was single. Yeah. Okay, guys, no? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Can you hear yes. us? Yes. Mel, you're fixing to have to do your first edit, honey. I have no connection. I keep cutting in and out. Uh, what, what do you want? Do you want to start over? So I'm going to have to. No, we won't have to start over. I think we can splice these together, don't you think? Um, well, you're still on the screen. You, you, you've come in and out a couple of times, but you're still on the screen. Can you read your next okay. question? Are you okay? Okay. Are we ready for it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Cobe, after the multiple marriage teaching came out, what were your thoughts and reactions and how were you being counseled on the matter? Uh, thoughts and reactions. Uh, first off, I thought it was something that workers weren't going to have really. It wasn't going to be something that we would be able to take part in because we were just dirt poor. We didn't make that much money, which anybody working in the house wasn't making that much money. Uh, Second off, being a guy, of course, I'm thinking, wow, hey, I can possibly get another wife, even though, like I said before, we were in the work. And at the time that it came out, we were, I was not making much money at all. So financially, I thought it was not within my grasp. But of course, being a guy, you're thinking, hey, you can have more than one wife. It was, of course, an interesting concept at the time. But uh so I started, I guess, convincing myself that being in the work, that would maybe give me a heads up, you know, or 
a, an, a, opportunity. an opportunity yeah. to be able to partake in something like that, but that was not the case. But uh, yeah, of and course, at first I said, you know, the workers aren't going to be able to really do this. And then being a guy, you know, a little excited about the prospect right. of having another wife. But uh, of course, I didn't know half of what I know now. And I'm right. thankful that that never happened. But yeah, those are my reactions about it. So, and how were you being counseled? What were the counselors um, telling you about that, about the whole situation? If I had brought something to their attention regarding that, it was basically, did yeah. you need me to wait? Yeah, I don't know where she went. Hang on. Yeah, she did go. I think she is lagging because it took her a while to answer your question about starting her question. Shoot, where did she go? Yeah, she's not on there, period. No, she's not. This is the first time we've At had At first, she was blacking out and then coming back on. But yeah, that's what talking. I was seeing, too. It would just show her name on the screen, but now I'm not even seeing that. <clears throat> Let me try to send her the link again. Hang on. Let me try to send her another link and see what happens. You want to sit on this one? Okay. Let's see if she responds to that. Um, I will kind of continue on. Um, so how were you being counseled about that, Jacob? Like, what were the counselors telling you as far as that's concerned? Uh, it was basically that it was something that the women didn't need to know about. Um, you could keep it. Uh, completely from her and that was your right to do so as a male uh, I wasn't encouraged to try to find I was never encouraged to try to find a wife or get married I just if I had questions about it it was always that really you can conduct your business how you see fit and she doesn't have the right to ask her and then she doesn't need to know you don't okay. have to tell her anything was basically the way it went okay I am going to Go ahead, we're gonna stop. I'll start a second session and I'm gonna to try to call Autumn in the meantime, we'll see what's going on here. So at that point, then Jessica will come back. We'll ask you because we basically wanna ask you the same question about your thoughts and feelings yeah. um, and your reaction okay. to the multiple marriage. But we'll come back and we'll do that so in part two. You'll send us a new link? Yep, I'll send you a new link, but I'm gonna call Autumn first just so to find out what happened to her. So we're gonna stop. Sounds good. Okay.